Threading a needle can be a real struggle. Here's a great trick to help you out. Wrap the thread around the back of your hand and over. Then gently rub the eye of the needle around on the top of the thread, like this. After a few seconds, it rises up through the eye. And you can carefully pull it through, threading the needle. Pretty cool, huh? It's quick and easy, and it works really well. But if you struggle with that, you can use the toothbrush method. Lie your thread across the bristles of the brush, then simply push your needle down over the top. And the bristles poke the thread up through the eye. And once you've got the loop, just pull it through with your fingers. It's a clever little trick, and if you like this method, why not keep a toothbrush in with your sewing kit? If you find your glasses steam up when you come out of the cold into a warm room, you can try washing them in some warm water and a bit of soap, then gently dab them dry. The soap leaves a thin film on the lenses, which will help prevent them steaming up in the future. If you've got a couple of drinking glasses that are stuck together and you can't separate them, fill the top one with cold water and dip the bottom one in warm water. This will cause it to expand slightly so we can lift out the cooler top glass. If you find your washing up sponge becomes tatty and worn out, you can prolong the life of your next sponge by just cutting it in half so you've got two smaller sponges to wear out instead. This will save you a bit of money in the long run, and because it's smaller, it's easy to squeeze out all the water so it doesn't go mouldy. If you've got heavy stains, like these tea stains that you struggle to wash off, you can use a little toothpaste on your sponge. This is mildly abrasive and does a really good job of removing stains. Fresh and squeaky clean. You can also use some on an old toothbrush to clean up discoloured tile grouting. It takes a bit of elbow grease, but it makes a huge difference. If your drain is a bit grimy and smelly, you can tip down a couple of spoonfuls of bicarbonate of soda then pour down a little vinegar. It really foams up and it helps to loosen any grime. Give it a quick brush and a wash down and it's made a huge difference. You can make an automatic plant waterer by placing a jug of water slightly higher than your house plant. Then take a ball of yarn and cut off a piece, dunk it in the water to saturate it then poke one end down into the soil of your plant. I used a skewer to push it in about an inch deep. Now over time, the water will gently trickle down the yarn from the jug, keeping your plant well irrigated. And what's great is you can use the same jug to irrigate more than one plant. Just do the same again with another thread. If you're enjoying this video and you're new here, you might want to subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell so you don't miss my future content. And if you want to help support the channel, you can become a member and get access to perks. Just click the join button to get more details. If you've got a bouquet of flowers that have started to wilt and they look a bit tired, you can revive them and give them a new lease of life. First, drain away the old water, fill the vase up with fresh, and I'm also adding in a couple of teaspoons of sugar. This will help to nourish the flowers. Before we put the flowers back in the vase, cut about an inch off the stalk, but slice it at an angle like this. This helps maximise the surface area for the water to be absorbed. Do this with all the stems, and for the tougher ones like these roses, you can actually slice up into the stem as well. This will help maximise water absorption. Once you've done them all, carefully stand them back up in the vase. Notice how the angular cut really allows water to flow into the stem, as opposed to a flat cut which can be obstructed by just standing on the base of the vase. Over the next 12 hours, the flowers really did come back to life. They really perked up. And with a little bit of rearranging, there we are. If you're trying to light a match outside, but find it's just too windy to keep it alight, you can prepare a match like this. Use a sharp knife and carefully carve back the four corners of the match just behind the head. Then do it again a second time so it looks like this. These eight little splinters will help the matchstick to burn quicker, giving you a stronger, more wind-resistant flame. If you find yourself in an emergency and need to make a candle, you can cut off a chunk of butter, 
place it on something heatproof and poke a hole straight down the centre with a skewer. Then cut yourself off a length of cotton string and poke it through the hole so it goes all the way to the bottom. Coat the end of the wick with a little bit of butter and light up your new emergency candle. If you've got a zip which is a bit stiff and doesn't seem to work properly, you can take a bar of soap and gently rub it up and down against the zip. Do both sides and it'll help to free it up so once again your zip glides smoothly. If you want to clean fluff off a garment but you haven't got a lint roller, you can make your own out of a roll of tape. Pull off a strip and instead of cutting it off, wrap it backwards around the roll and stick it to itself like this. Now it's ready to roll over your clothes. You've made your own DIY lint roller. When it's full, just tear off a strip, peel back another one and it's ready to use again. If someone's got a ring stuck on their finger, it can be a real struggle to remove it. But here's a clever trick. Cut off a length of ribbon and you may also need a toothpick. Tuck the end of the ribbon underneath the ring and out of the other side like this. Then wrap the ribbon around the knuckle and spiral it down the finger like this. You don't need to do it tight and it shouldn't hurt at all. Next, take hold of the ribbon at the other end and carefully unwind it all the way down the finger. You should find it slowly releases the ring over the knuckle. Keep going until it's nice and loose and you can remove it from the finger. Pretty clever, huh? If you like, you may want to add some washing up liquid or liquid soap to help it slide better over a really tight knuckle. If your shoelace is all frayed and you struggle to thread it through the eyelet of your shoe because it's missing the plastic tip, you can repair your lace with a strip of tape. Wind it tightly around the end to form a new aglet. This'll help stop it fraying more and allow you to easily thread your shoes again. If you're making hard boiled eggs and you find one of the eggs has a crack in the shell, don't worry, you can still use it. Just carefully lower it down into the water with the others, then add a little white vinegar to the water and allow it to simmer as normal. The vinegar stops the egg white seeping out of the shell and making a mess of the egg. Here it is after it's cooked and cooled down. If you can't remember which eggs are hard-boiled and which are raw, you can spin the egg on the counter, then stop it with your finger and see what it does. If it stops the egg spinning completely, the egg is hard-boiled and you can peel it. However, if the egg continues to rotate a little after you stopped it, the inside of the egg is raw and it still carries momentum. So make sure you crack this egg over a bowl. If you accidentally smash some glass on the floor, it can be difficult to pick up all the really small fragments. After you removed all the big pieces, you can take a slice of bread and carefully wipe that across the floor to pick up any tiny fragments. Make sure you don't get any in your hand and you can see how they've stuck into the bread. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. If you want to see more, you can click on the links. Stay safe, have fun, and as always, thanks for watching.